All right, let's look at a little bit of help for worksheets three and four. This is GCO A2 still. These last worksheets, so we've progressed from function to one to one function. That's our old algebra review, which went from what we in geometry are calling a mapping to something we are now going to talk about just about every day for the rest of the year called transformations. And now we will classify that just a little bit more to an isometric transformation. Now the word isometric means to preserve the distances in the shape, the angles in the shape. If there's parallelism, it preserves that the lines will be parallel when you're done. If you were just to say what isometric is, I'd whisper it to you and I would say congruent. It's a word you already know, meaning identical, to, be, uh, to have the same shape and form and size. So isometric motions, when you move them and change them and alter their locations, when you're done, they are the same original shape. So you have some that are isometric and some that are non-isometric. In the isometric family, you're going to find out we got rotations and reflections and translations. In the non-isometric area, we're going to have things like dilations. Ooh, doo, doo, doo. Dilations. Just like this. Zooming in, zooming out. Um, and things called stretches and whatever. So this is kind of the fun that's coming, is looking at uh, these guys here uh, in our world. Um, let me just basically say this about dilation and stretches, because uh, these are kind of new terms. Most know rotate, reflect, translate. But to dilate is to enlarge proportionally. So whatever the original was, when you're done, they are proportional to each other. Again, we're going to study a lot of this. I've given you big ideas, but this is dilation. Uh, stretching would be like this. If I started with a rectangle and then I stretched it only maybe one dimensionally. So these shapes are not uh, a dilation. They're a stretch. The dimensions did not grow proportionally. So you'll see more of that and we definitely will talk more about dilation stretches. We'll talk a lot about uh, the isometric transformation. So let's look at a couple under the document camera. Let's look at a couple things uh, from the worksheets just to get a, a picture of what they look like. Here are, it asks, are rotations isometric? Well, we notice that in a rotation, the distances all are maintained, the angles all stay the same. The same as this basically and turns. So yes, rotations are isometric. A translation or a slide, as some of you may know it, uh, is of course an isometric motion in the plane. Everything just moves over in a parallel manner. A reflection, while it does alter the look of the shape, it does not alter the shape itself. Notice the distances all still match. It's the same shape, just in a reflected manner. So it is also isometric. These three, rotation, translation, and reflection, are isometric transformations. When we look at uh, dilations, though, and stretches, we notice that that is not the case. Here's a small triangle that's been mapped to a larger triangle. The shape is the same, but the sizes are not. So a dilation is not isometric. Here, a stretch is to basically change the dimensions. Uh, non-proportionally, so we kept the height the same, but we grabbed this and pulled it sideways. And of course, these are not isometric. And again, a similar example, a rectangular shape getting pulled one singularly dimensional and, uh, and not changing its height at all. So while they're both rectangles, they are not, um, they are not 
the same because that's what isometric means. So they're, it's not isometric. Another uh, example of isometry is to look at uh, maybe an image and then it changes. So here we see uh, the pre-image, the original, and then a much smaller one. Now they are proportional. So uh, we would say, though, that this is not isometric. And this would be, in this case, a dilation that's taken place. Here we see the same height between the two puppies, but this one's been stretched this way. And so, again, not isometric, certainly, and a stretch has taken place. Here we see a rotation that's taken place, and yes, it is isometric. Just because it's on its side, the shape is identical to the original. Let's look at another quick case. This little guy here, um, you can see from here to here, is, yes, isometric and uh, he's been turned that's a rotation that's taken place here yes we have ourself again an isometric relationship and it's been performed a rotation finally here again we have the we have some things taking place to stretch this and so it is not isometric the last thing you'll be asked to do with isometries is to Follow a coordinate rule to see if, um, if that coordinate rule produces isometries or not. So let's first look here. Given a triangle, uh, in this case at negative 2, 2, at negative 1, 4, at 2, and 2. So it gives the original points, and it gives you a rule, and you're to map these points using this rule. So this rule says keep x the same. So negative 2, negative 1, and 2. And it says negate the y value. Negative 2, negative 4, negative 2. Now they want us to know if this is an isometry or not. So we should, be, we should plot this to find out. Negative 2, 2 is a prime. Negative 1, 4 is b prime and 2 and negative 2 is c prime. If I connect these, I find myself looking at the same triangle. Right? The distances all match up. This is a distance of 4 across here. Uh, same rise and run and so on here. Um, and so they are isometric, yes. And if I look at the original, maybe I'll quickly plot the original here. Might help me identify this. This is a reflection. So this is another way to uh, practice our coordinate rules, plotting our points, and then coming up with whether it's an isometry or not.